One media that I really enjoy working with is pen and ink. And with pen and ink, you have a wide variety of pens to choose from, and uh, of course ink. And the t what I like about pen and ink, uh, which is basically a fountain pen or a, uh, um, or a dip pen, is that you have ink that just flows out of the pen, and there's really very little resistance to getting ink onto the paper. So, for example, this, this drawing here is a drawing of uh, Christenberg Castle in Denmark, and it's done with actually just a single pen. With a single pen, I can get a very thin line right here, but also a very thick line, as you see right here. That's all done with a single pen. So I'm going to show you how I did that, um, some of the techniques for that. I'm going to show you some other uh, some fountain pens. So to start off with, this is a pen, it's a dip pen, it's a, and a, a nib is actually, it's just a metal piece that goes into there, and a, a holder. And with that, I get some, um, this is black ink, this is non-waterproof ink, so um, when I'm traveling, I like to use non-waterproof ink as opposed to India ink, because Sometimes I don't have, I, all I have is water to wash out my, uh, my pen, and if you have India ink, that just sort of jams up your pens if you have nothing to wash them out with. So what you do is you take a little bit of the ink, you dip it into your, take one of these little Higgins, this is the Higgins ink jar, and so I just take my ink and I make sure there's not too much of it on there, and I dip it in there, and then with this one pen, I can do one line here, that's one type of line, by pulling it that way, and this, here the pen is upside down, I do one like there, it's a really thin line, then I turn it over, I have a thick line here, I have another thick line here, which is actually a little thinner, so with one single pen, this is actually a $2 pen nib and maybe a $1 nib holder. So a total of $3 in the pen and then of course uh, $3 for a jar of ink. I can get a huge variety of ink thickness out of a single pen. Now for a little more portability and a little um, less flexibility in your choice of pens. Of course, you have a fountain pen. This, of course, holds ink inside, the, inside of it. And with the fountain pen, I can put my ink down there. And you should always test a fountain pen to see if you can draw upside down, because you usually get a thinner line upside down. It gives you a little more flexibility in what you draw. And you're always on the lookout for a cool fountain pen. This one I got at a flea market in Barcelona, Spain. And you can always put down a lot of ink to get an area of black. Of course, it's a lot easier to do black with the big areas of black with the, uh, the pen and ink with the big nib like that. But you could find another nib, for example. There's just another nib holder. Let me just get all the excess off there. Let's see this one. Turn this upside down. And of course, you always have to have the ink nearby. But it's surprising how much ink one of these can actually hold. You tap it against the side to get any to get all the excess off. And with that, you can get a huge amount of variation in the pen width. And have a really beautiful, deliberate line. And even if I just tap it, I get kind of a round dot. 